All right, Hannah, NBA playoff time, game one tonight, Heat and Sixers. Eastern Conference semifinal series getting off and running. Philly starting tonight without their MVP candidate Joel Embiid, who suffered a right orbital fracture at the end of game six against the Raptors, but he could return during the series. Miami, on the other hand, finished the job against the Hawks last week without both Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry. Lowry's already been ruled out for tonight, while Butler remains questionable. The two teams split the season series, the Heat averaging just one more point than the Sixers in their meetings, though none of the games were decided by fewer than five points. Here's Tyrese Maxey now on playing without Joel Embiid. I wouldn't say survive. I would say, like, you know, just go out there and compete as hard as you can. Always try to win the game. Um, if Joel's here, and then we would try to do the same thing, try to win the game. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's a competition. And this is going to be a series. And uh, I think we have a very competitive group. And uh, we have a lot of guys that have been in and out of the rotation uh, throughout the year. And uh, I think we're pretty adaptable. So we've got to try to figure it out and just try to win. That's really it. We are joined now by ESPN NBA reporter Tim Bontemps, who was just at Sixers shoot around. Tim, game one, just hours away. How is Philly now preparing without Joel Embiid? Well, Jay, as Tyrese Maxey just said a couple hours ago at shoot around, the Sixers are preparing to go out and try to win these next two games in Miami without their superstar center and try to get this series back to Philadelphia, where they hope that they could get him back on the court. Now, it's unclear exactly when Joel Embiid will be able to play in this series, but there's a chance he could return, as our ESPN's Andrew Orjanowski reported this weekend, in either Game 3 or 4 in Philadelphia this weekend. So, obviously, if the Sixers can come in here and get a win either tonight or Wednesday night, that would put them in prime position to be in control of the series if they can get Joel back on the court. Now, as Tyrese Maxey said, he really echoed the same confidence the Sixers have had over the past couple of days as they've adjusted to this news of Embiid missing the beginning of this series, saying they've got a veteran, experienced group. They've traded for James Harden. They've got Tobias Harris. They've got Maxey, who's emerged as a second-year player. And they've got a collection of guys at center who they hope can fill at least some of the gap until Joel comes back, including second-year uh, big man Paul Reed, who could start tonight and played pretty well in the first round series against the Toronto Raptors as Joel Embiid's understudy. But obviously, it's a much different challenge going up against arguably the best defensive center in the league at Bam Adebayo in this series while Joel is out. Yeah, Tim, this is not the first time Embiid has missed a game one against the Heat. In 2018, first round, he missed games one and two after suffering a broken bone around his left eye. And the Sixers won game one but lost game two then. Tim Bontemps, thank you so much. Let us take a look at Joel Embiid by the numbers. Yeah, I mean, what a huge loss, Jay, right? He's been the engine for this Philly team this year. The Sixers have played 293 minutes this postseason, 80% of those with Embiid on the court. Also had the highest usage rate in the NBA this season. He's been doubled, Jay, 85 times this postseason, far more than any other player. The Sixers uh, averaged 0.98 points per play when he was doubled, but 1.09 points on all the other plays. And he's gone for 30 points and 10 rebounds, three games already this postseason, the most of any players, including dropping 33 against the Raptors before he had to leave that game with four minutes remaining. Which brings us now to Tim Legler. Now, listen, the one thing we do know for sure, he will not be there for games one and two. When he does return, he's still going to have that torn ligament in his thumb, right? Because that's still there. He's going to play with that the remainder of the playoffs, also potentially wearing a mask. When you look at this matchup with the Heat, where do the Sixers miss and beat the most? What is this team going to look like? Well, Han, I think it's the graphic that you just put up a second ago, 85 double teams. That's what it comes down to at Joel Embiid. This is a guy that wins every individual matchup that he gets in the paint, and then he wins a lot of matchups even when you throw a second guy at him. But the most important thing is he occupies. He occupies defenders. He occupies backline defenders. He occupies guards that have to get into the gap when he attacks from you know, 15 to 18 foot range. And what that means is space for the rest of those guys to operate. When you take him off the floor, basically what you're asking James Harden to do is roll it back, have a vintage game, have one of those games in Houston when he was the highest usage rate player in the league, when he was a guy that won every matchup in front of him, when he was a guy that could get into the paint, get to the line 12 to 15 times, and control the situation possession by possession. I just don't think James Harden is that player anymore. So for me, for the Sixers to even have a chance, I think the headline tomorrow has to be about Tyrese Maxey and not James Harden. I think if the headline is about James Harden, it's because we're going to be focusing on what he didn't do or how he struggled. 
if the first words out of my mouth are Tyrese Maxey tomorrow morning, <laughs> I think the Sixers have a chance to win because that means okay. he had a special night and he's very capable of doing it. I just think it's an awful lot to ask this team to go to Miami and win one out of two against the number one seed when you don't have your best player on both ends of of the floor. Mm -hmm. It's just too tall of an order at this stage of James Harden's career. Yeah, and if James Harden were to carry a heavy load, let's say in game one, can he do that game after game after game at this point in his career, given his injury history this season? That remains to be seen. All right, Tim, hang tight. 